What's going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to the meat stall. Today, uh, well not today because I did it cook a couple of days ago. I'm just editing it today. Uh, I did uh, two uh, spare ribs. Well actually they were St. Louis cut. Got a pretty good deal on them down here at the store. So I decided to put them on. Uh, one I used Dalmatian rub. Another one I used uh, Walker's wood. A little bit about that Walker's wood. If if you don't have time to make your own Jamaican jerk season and you can find that uh, Walker's Wood, which can be found online if you go and you look, get you some of that Walker's Wood Jamaican jerk season. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It puts just the right uh, hint on of uh, of heat on it and, and the spices really come together. Uh, today I did my cook on uh, Weber Smoky Mountain 18 inch. I got a lot of my buddies that was telling me Man, this thing really holds temps good, like uh, Lyle over there, no hippie, uh, Thyron over there, TNT, Onion, Smoke Shack, they all tell me about, uh, man, once you cook on that Weber Smoky Mountain, you know, uh, that thing really holds temp, and I can attest to that. That's one of the best uh, holding, man, temp holding pits for the price that I think is out there right now, so if you don't have a Weber Smoky Mountain, uh, and you get a chance to get you one, go ahead and get you one. Uh, so uh, enough about me yapping. Let's get on into this cook. I'll see you guys next time. Like I always say, find you some meat and smoke it. Okay. Turn me up a little bit. Here's the ribs. I uh, trimmed them up on the back side. A little bit of skirt meat. I removed that, the little danglies, any little danglies, a little bit of fat, I moved that. I still have to remove the membrane. Some people score the membrane. Me, myself, I like to remove it. Uh, these ribs was already St. Louis cut. I like the fat that you see in it right here because a lot of people want to get the ribs that look almost exactly like this. But you want to get the ones that got the fat in it because that's where the flavor is at. I removed a large piece of fat right here. And here it had a piece of the breast bone. Not the, with the backbone. And I moved that. And um, I'm about to season up for the cook now. Here's the ingredients that I'm going to use for uh, doing these ribs. I'm going to do a two-part rib well i'm gonna season the ribs in two ways this first rib i'm gonna season it with this walker's wood jamaican jerk seasoning now with the seasoning here it says you use well right here it says you use uh one ounce per two pounds of meat and since a spare rib a st louis cut is probably about two pounds of meat Sometimes two and a half depends on how you cut it. I'll probably be using an ounce to cover this one rib. And the second rib here, I'm gonna go a little more traditional. Uh, here's a shaker. Anybody can can do this or make this. This is just uh, my Dalmatian blend or what people like to call salt and pepper blend. It's more of a Texas style where I went two parts pepper, one part salt. Or you can just go one and one, depend on your preference. But I like the way that that pepper, when you go to two to one, gives a good bite. And with this rib here that I'm going to use this Dalmatian blend on, I'm going to mop it with my go-to Stubbs mopping sauce. I use the Stubbs on uh, pretty much everything. It has a nice vinegary taste to it, and it keeps it moist. And it also adds terrific color, and it really gives your barbecue a bite. If you get a chance, get out there, get you some stubs. I really like it. And what I'm going to do with the uh, the jerk rib is uh, here in my spray bottle, with my mister, I got some apple juice and some apple cider vinegar. I'm just going to spray that and keep that moist. I'm going to be doing... This on my 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain today. So uh, I will get back with you in a little bit. 
I'm back. I got the ribs all season. This one here, I just went on with a little bit of vegetable oil and uh, my uh, salt and pepper Dalmatian blend. And here, I put a little vegetable oil on it and then I coated it with the Walker's Wood Jerk Seasoning, hot and spicy. I used this uh, seasoning on some chicken before and it came out fairly good. It says you can use it on chicken, pork, fish, hamburgers, and vegetables. Uh, if it comes out good, then uh, I'm definitely going to use it again. Some of the ingredients that it has in it, I think it has some scallions, scotch bonnet peppers, uh, salt, black pepper, all spice, nutmegs, citric acid, cane sugar, and thyme. So with the uh, all spice, the nutmeg, and the thyme, and the scotch bonnet, it has all the usual suspects for uh a good jerk rub or jerk seasoning. Now you can make it yourself, but uh, I found that uh, this Walker's Wood really works pretty good. So if you get a chance, go out and get you some. We'll be back at top five up there, uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. It's another beautiful day out here in sunny San Diego. I want to show you one thing that I did to the Weber Smoky Mountain that I got from uh, T. Roy Cooks, responsibly. Shout out to T. Roy. You get a chance to go out and check out the station. This guy's doing some awesome stuff. But what he, but what he did is uh, he added another grate to the ex existing grate on your WSM. So it'll catch the coals and it allows for a much longer burn. Now I can uh, wire these two together, but I don't see where it would take a problem or where it would be a problem with just picking them up like that. So let me get the uh, charcoal ring back in and I'm gonna go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Got the charcoals all set up. Got my little space set in the middle. I got my ignition charcoal here. Then my chimney is started. What I did, I placed it upside down. I like to do that when I don't have a lot of charcoals and light. And I'm using uh, some Frontier Tumbleweeds today to uh, start the fire. And normally, I know that usually you go on with apple when you're smoking uh, pork, but today I'm gonna use some hickory chips. I'm gonna be real sparingly with that because I don't want to oversmoke the meat, but I really like the flavor that hickory puts on it. All right, see you guys in a little bit. I got the uh, <coughs> chimney rolling pretty good with the fire starter in there. And once those things get red hot, I'm gonna pour it right here in the middle, right here. And she's gonna come up to temp. And when she come to the temp, we're gonna put them ribs on. All right, I'll holler at y'all later. I'm using my Thermo Pro today because I wanted to see what the uh, great temp is rather than the dome temp. The dome temp, uh, it reads pretty accurate, but I want to know what the great temp, what, where my meat is sitting at. So I'm gonna be using my Thermo Pro today. And one thing that I use is a potato. You can use that and set it right on your grate if you don't have the uh, clip. Uh, I've lost my uh, clip, so I'm improvised today with a with a potato okay what we've done now is uh, I got the uh, WSM put back together I took the coals from here I dumped them in the bottom inside of the little hole and I put my hickory chips a little on the fire that's why I'm getting this thick smoke now and I've sprinkled some throughout the coals so I have some some uh, smoke throughout the cook I'm just looking, and smoke is definitely an indicator where you may have leaks and stuff at. See right here, around here, I'm gonna get some barbecue felt, and I'm gonna put, to close this off right here. But right now we're coming up to temp. According to the dome grade, I got like 125, and I'm gonna 
let it come up to about my cooking temp, about 250, 275, and then I'm gonna start backing down on my, my bottom vents. What I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna remove the lid and then I'm gonna place some water that I got from out the house. I'm gonna put it in my water pan. Hindsight, I probably should have did that at the beginning of the cook so I wouldn't lose my temp and come back. But one thing that you should do, make sure that you're using warm water because the colder the water you put into your pit, it's going to take more BTUs from the fire or from the thermal energy to, to heat that water and, and to maintain a pit temp. So ensure that you use warm water instead of cold water. I'm pretty much settled out at like 243, 244, but it's going up very slowly. So I don't have a fast increase in temp. So I can catch it and I can monitor it also from the thermal pro on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the meat on now. As it stands right now, all vents are wide open. I haven't had to crack it back. So that's a good thing. Let me get this meat and we'll put it on. All right, got the meat out here. This one here is the Walker's wood, and this is just straight salt and pepper. Pit running at 250, all vents open, so let's go and put it on. We got a nice little sizzle. Move this out the way a tad bit. Let's see if we can fit this salt and pepper on here. Sure it's not touching the meat so I don't get a false temp. Put a little space in between so we can get some good smoker. I really wish I had the 22 inch. The 22 inch will be my next purchase. Let's go ahead and close up. <laughs> Sitting back on the couch, relaxing. All uh, the grill's still going at 2:35. I got a little time to watch some uh, barbecue shows and play some. What's we playing? ABC Mouse. Yeah. And play some ABC Mouse with my buddy. All right. I was sitting in the house. I noticed I started to get a, a little spike. Not too much, cause uh, once again I tell you I hadn't adjusted my vents yet. Uh, I was reading about 260. And I noticed it start to want to come up on me a little bit. So what I did is I came here and closed my vents probably about a little more than halfway. On this one, close it on this one as well, and I closed it on this one. We're gonna see. The temperature should start to come down. When you're trying to control your temp on these pits, your main adjustments is going to be done through your intake vents. Okay, we'll see what that adjustment did and we'll come back and adjust it later. Hour number one at the adjustment, showing at 244. Coming out for a spritz. Mm -mm. Nighttime has hit, and I got a small. Well, let's see if we can do it right here. A small spike. It's like 271. So. I just came and adjusted my intake damper. I closed this intake damper here all the way. This one here is closed all the way. And I still got this one here as a quarter open. We're gonna see if that uh, will bring me down towards 250. Here I'm going on with the uh, wrap. Our little parquet bargain. Uh, brown sugar and a little bit of stuffed mopping sauce. 
I double wrapped it twice because I didn't want the bones to stick through. We're going to repeat the process. Brown sugar, stuff, mopping sauce, and put the meat down into the sauce. Now you can use whatever you want for this. I just use stubs. Here we go after an uh, hour inside of the wrap. That pullback on the bone is killer. So I know they're going to be tender. I'm going to let them sit on here probably like 30 minutes to tighten back up. Ribs fresh off the smoker. Salt and pepper here. This is the Jamaican. Just want to pick this up for you. And show you that we bend. You are watching a that. master at work. That lets me know right there that's a tender rib right there. I'm going to let these rest about 10 or 15 minutes. We can go ahead and cut them. All right. Uh, the ribs are been smoked for five hours. I wrapped them, let them get tender, took them out, let them toughen up just a little bit. Um, and now this is a finished product. I really like the pullback that you got on these bones right here. And we also got the same pullback on these uh, salt and pepper. These things are tender. They're about to break already. But let's go ahead and uh, let's cut one so we can taste it. Let's flip it over so we can get a, so we can cut it better. Cut it. 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 Right there. Got a nice uh, smoke green here. Not prominent, but it's good. Let's go ahead and cut it. Let's taste this one. It's straight out the middle, so we're gonna taste it, see how it tastes. Perfect bite. I taste the hickory in it. Not overpowering. Real good, just a salt and pepper bite, sir. It's a real good rip. You know about that. It's good. It comes off the bone, but it doesn't fall off the bone without searching for it. Let's see if we can get into these uh, Jamaican jerk. Set this to the side a little bit. We'll go right here. Down the middle. Once again, we got a good smoke ring. Let's taste this. Perfect bite. I immediately taste the difference between the two ribs. That Walker's wood that I put on it, it's real good. Outstanding cook. I'll definitely be using this again. Um, remember, find you some meat and smoke it. Okay. Turn me up a little bit.